All right, this is problem 130 from your text. It's a really nice problem for introducing the idea of a shear stress in a fluid. What we've got is we've got a solid surface. Think of it as like the ground or the top of the table. And on top of that, you've got a liquid. And on top of that, you've got another plate. Okay? And the idea is that the, this surface is going to stay constant. The plate on the right is going to move to the right. And the fluid between the two surfaces is going to be shear. So we're going to have this shearing motion as um, the top moves to the right and the bottom stays um, in the same position. And so we're going to have this idea of you know, shearing taking place in this fluid. So we can relate this shear stress to a force and to an area the same way you relate a pressure to a force in an area. The shear stress is just given by the shear force divided by the area over which that shear force acts. And I sketched out here a perspective view of what this could look like, where you have a solid surface on the bottom, a solid surface on the top. You've got some fluid in between. Okay, and so we're going to drag or pull on the surface to the right. It's going to create a shear stress in the fluid between the two plates. And the shear stress is related to area and the force just as force over area. Okay. So that's the key idea there. Um, now, the other key idea is uh, Newton's law of viscosity, which says that the shear stress in any liquid is given by the viscosity of the liquid times the strain rate, which can be written as du dy. So what does du dy represent? Okay, so here I've written the y dimension pointing upwards. So imagine as we move upwards, y is increasing. So down here at the bottom, y equals zero. By the time we get up to here, y equals this distance, which is capital H. Okay. So when we're when y is equal to zero, we're on the bottom surface. And on the bottom surface, the plates the surface isn't moving. So that means the velocity of the liquid there is not moving. The velocity is zero. But by the time you get to the top surface, the top surface is moving to the right. And it's moving to the right at a speed v. So that means that any liquid here is moving to the right at a speed v. Okay? So we've got on the bottom, liquid not moving. On the top, liquid moving at a speed v. And the velocity distribution, which we can write as u as a function of y, is just going to linearly increase from the bottom to the top. So we can write that u, the horizontal velocity, as a function of position y, is just going to be equal to the velocity v times distance from the bottom wall over the total distance from here to here. Okay. So in this formula, we can see that when y equals 0, little u goes to 0. When y equals capital H, we have y h over h is 1, and so velocity just equals v. So now this is a, a linear description of the fluid velocity from the bottom surface to the top surface. And if we take the derivative, of u with respect to y, we'll end up with an expression for the shear stress. So if we take du dy according to that formula, we end up with simply that being equal to v over h. And so now if we substitute this into that, we end up with another expression for the shear stress, which is that the shear stress is equal to the viscosity times the velocity of the top place divided by the thickness of the layer. Okay, so now I've got two different expressions for shear stress. One, shear stress is force over area. Another, shear stress is equal to the viscosity times the top velocity over the thickness of the layer. If we set those two expressions equal to each other, we say F over A is equal to mu times v over h. So then I can rearrange 
and an obtained expression for the viscosity. The viscosity will go as force over area times the thickness divided by the velocity. So now I have a general solution for this problem, which says that the force increases, that means the loss of viscosity is bigger. If the thickness gets smaller, so the um, viscosity is um, smaller, as velocity gets bigger, um, viscosity gets smaller also. So anyways, we have, a, we have an expression for viscosity now. And if we were to substitute numbers, um, we need some numbers. The, the problem does give you some numbers. Um, area is equal to 0 0.5 meters squared. Velocity is equal to um, 0 0.6 millimeters per second. The thickness here is 4 millimeters. And the force is equal to 4 millinewtons. Okay, so if we put these numbers into our final solution here, we end up with mu is the force, which is 4 millinewtons times the thickness, which is 0. Um, in fact, why don't we write this out this way, 0 0.004 newtons times the thickness, which is 0 0.004 meters, divided by the area, which is 0.5 meters squared, times divided by the velocity, which is 0 0.6 millimeters per second, which is 0 0.0006 meters per second. And if we work through units, we have um, meters to the third, meters here. We have um, a unit a second here, so we end up with the units are going to be Newton second per meters squared. And the value is 0 0.0. 533. Sometimes um, units are expressed not as newton seconds per meter squared, but as kilograms per meters per second. So if we re rewrote newtons as kilograms meters per second squared, multiplied by seconds and divided by meters squared, we could see that we would end up with canceling that, canceling that, canceling that, canceling that, and the units would be kilogram. Um, per meters per second. Okay. What's nice about this problem, this is the simplest shear type problem that, that you can possibly imagine. One plate on the bottom not moving, another plate on top moving to the right. You've got liquid in between the two plates which is being sheared. The force to pull that plate to the right is related to that shear stress and related to the area through these expressions that we've worked out, okay?